So uh, I have been doing a sermon series called Empower. We've been uh, with the word that we received at the beginning of the year and then the, uh, the word actually transpiring where we're having miracles and different signs and wonders, lots of people being delivered. Uh, the miracle being is their life post deliverance. You know, um, somebody screaming and hollering rather than around on the floor, uh, even spitting up, throwing up, coughing, sneezing, uh, even, I mean, literally projectile vomiting, uh, sweating, yeah, sweating's involuntary, throwing's up, involuntary. A lot of that stuff can be faked, and I understand that. A lot of it can emphatically be faked. Uh, and I believe that there are people out there looking for YouTube clicks and looking to build ministries, not to build the kingdom, that are on top of their deliverance uh, pedestal, waving a flag, you know, and it's really not all about God, you know, and really who it's about, it's about the person in bondage. So when Jesus looked at them, he was moved with compassion because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. But the evidence that we see is the changed lives. The, the people that were having to take all kind of medicine to sleep, the people that have been struggling with addiction for years, they could not let go of, they couldn't get help of. Uh, the relationships that have been mended, the forgiveness that has been afforded, the drastic 180 degree change in the people that we've taken through deliverance. It is remarkable. Everywhere we have saw what we felt was legitimate demonic manifestation, we have seen miraculous change after. And you know, in, in, in I know some people think, well, y'all just a bunch of dumb old country boys and, and girls and don't know much about psychology and don't know much about uh, sociology and emotional health and blah, 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 blah. This is what I know. I know the Word of God. Now, do I believe in psychology? Do I believe they serve a purpose? Do I believe in therapists? Man, I believe in therapists. Ah. Uh, but what we're seeing is real. But so Sunday morning I'm gonna be talking about why if we got two churches in the same town, one both of them serving God, both of them solid doctrine, one seeing miracles, signs, wonders, and healing, one seeing that, and then the other not seeing it. Why? Why is it happening in some churches and not others? Now, the, the churches that it's not happening in, they'll just tell you it's not real. Well, most of them will. I shouldn't say that. I don't know. I've heard that a lot. I, I've been on the other side of this thing, and I've been skeptical when I've heard of things happening. Why isn't it happening? Why is it happening in some churches, and why is it happening in others? It says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. See, grace is God's ability to empower us to make the right decision. God's resurrection power in us to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. But if I'm prideful, and, and what is pride? Pride is simply thinking that you're better than somebody else. That's all pride is. And the church is full of prideful people. So Sunday morning, I'm going to be talking about the number one thing that stops the move of the Holy Spirit in churches. It is a stronghold of legalism and tradition. We are, have so clamped on to our tradition, we have seriously put God in a box. We put Him in a box. And God's not allowed to move. I, I promise you, at 9 out of 10 churches, if you see what happened at our church Friday night as a young girl that was sent to us by her therapist, a, a, a therapist, our counselor, a secular counselor, said, you don't have an emotional problem, you got a spiritual problem. Seek out a church that can handle the demons you're struggling with. So she come up to the altar, she starts getting sick, and she begins to throw up. I'm not talking about just a little. I'm talking about a lot of throwing up. 
we recognize that and moved to engage with a demon that was trying to get out of her. But what would happen in most churches? If uh, a person began to growl and speak in a demonic tongue in most churches, what would happen? They would be escorted out, right? Because they can't fathom that God still moves like that. God does still move like that. God still moves like this. From Thursday night to Saturday afternoon, we had five intense deliverance sessions. I'm talking about we're literally a young lady praying so hard, you could see the blood spots on her face the next day. You, I watched the splotches come up, and I would tell the demon to shut up, and I would ask her, I'd say, are you okay? She said, no, I'm hurting all over. So I felt sorry for her and stopped. Later on that night, she came, and the demon manifested, and and I was, I was, I, I mean, you know, I worry about people. This a demon coming out of somebody's taxing on your body, letting go, coming out, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but anyway, she ended up getting completely delivered. I know this is going to blow some of y'all's mind as she prayed in her prayer language. Yes, there's a difference between tongues and interpretation, tongues of man, and a heavenly angelic language where you pray to God because you don't know what to pray. Just sit down, read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 and get back with me. It's real. I know it's real. And then we're praying for another lady and um, for some reason uh, they begin to feel pressure and pain on the back of their neck. Well, I'm up there looking at the back of her neck and a scratch appears. Now, I've had two other instances where uh, people wake up with scratches and both times been demonic, but I watched this scratch appear. Then Ashley Barnes watched the scratch run down the lady's back. How does that happen? Well, the demon was upset. It was manifesting. The, 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 the spiritual impacts the natural. What do you think a psychosomatic illness is? That ain't even got, you just think you're sick, so you're sick. That probably defines about 80% of the, of the sicknesses. What do devils do? What do demons do? They adjust your thinking. What is a stronghold? It's a belief system in opposition to God. Opposition to the truth of God. It's all about how we think. So why aren't we seeing it in some churches? I mean, people aren't letting letting the spirit move. There, uh, you got preachers that are 150 pounds overweight, telling folks they shouldn't vape and smoke. You shouldn't be eating that many cookies, and you and you shouldn't be vaping and smoking. But until I get over my cookie addiction, I, I probably need to wait and make sure I'm working in concert with the Holy Spirit before I begin to try to convict you. Because if I try to convict you and I'm not working in concert with the Holy Spirit, then I am condemning you. And Jesus didn't come to condemn. But we got a church full of folks that are condemning. What gets me is all these posts. You've heard my sermon Sunday morning. You know how I feel about the... The, the LBGTQ stuff, and, and I don't mean it to be offensive, but straight up, y'all have hijacked Mother's Day. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. You've hijacked it. But you'll see people posting sins that they don't commit and don't even go to church. I hate this sin. I can't believe they do this. You know, you see somebody arrested for something uh, as a result of their addiction and you read the kind it's awful and a lot of these people say they're Christians no compassion that is the kind of thing that is the kind of pride that's the pride of legalism that keeps the Holy Spirit from operating in our churches period that's what's happening Anyway, so Sunday morning, we're going to be continuing the Empowered series and how the stronghold of legalism and tradition stop, halt the Holy Spirit from moving. I mean, you know, we got, it's not that hard to sin. You know, to do right and you don't do it, it's sin. You have respect a person, it is sin. There's, it's really, you look upon a woman and lust after, it is sin. It's easy to sin. Deal with your sin. Stop dealing with everybody else's. Unless you're their pastor and you hear from the Holy Spirit.
you know. I'm not going to go into Walmart and whip somebody else's kids for acting wrong, am I? I mean, that's stupid. They're not my kids. They're not my responsibility. And then listen, unbelievers don't go to hell for murder or homosexuality. Unbelievers don't go to hell for any of that. They go to hell because they don't believe. Now we can get into the debate, what does belief do? Well, I believe belief is a miracle, that it changes your very nature, you know? And does it happen all at once? Unfortunately not. Man, I wish that I had some special oil I could slap on people and rub it across them, slap them in the back of the head six times, say a little prayer, and all of a sudden their desire to sin was gone. Unfortunately, it don't work that way. But Sunday morning, overcoming the, the stronghold of legalism and tradition, and why we are seeing such a move of God in some churches, where we're seeing miracles, I mean, Miracles. To me, a miracle is when I've struggled with something for years and instantly I no longer struggle with it. That's a miracle. So we're seeing miracles and healings and we're seeing miraculous things. We're seeing just all. Oh, why are we seeing it in some churches and not in others? Because of this stronghold. Let me tell you something. You can be demonically influenced by a Pharisee type demon too. Now, you don't tell me I grew up in the strictest Pentecostal church you ever seen before in your life. It's awful. It's awful some of the stuff that I've seen. I, I, it is awful the way that I have seen uh, new believers treated because they still had issues that the old school folks thought they should be over by now. Anyway, God bless y'all. Please share this. and. Tune in Sunday morning at 1030 or catch the replay on YouTube. God bless you.